I've been expecting you. I'm Edward Blackgate. Come inside, friend, and welcome. This haven of the dead is named Everlasting Life. You might call it my masterpiece. I have planned every statue, every flower, every grave. Those interred here have a story to tell, a peculiar story, one in a million. Take Jessie Bodine, a voodoo queen from Nolens. She was an enterprising woman, and she might have prospered if she had stuck to her own very unmagical principles. You can hear Jessie's story if you listen. Shh. The dead have the softest voices. I'm Jessie Bodine. I'd take you inside, but dim spirits are jealous that someone wants to hear my story. You can cross them, though. Find my spell book. It has a spell to banish spirits. Hurry now. They'll only get stronger if you leave them be.
You make that tea at midnight like I showed you, and you won't have no more gripe in that leg. I appreciate that, Miss Bodine. But you sure you can't do nothing for my poor niece Betsy? They sold her to that awful Lollary house. I gave you a St. John protection route. Can't bring myself to take it to her. They say Delphine Lollary, she eats human liver for breakfast. Wagon tongues. Every servant within a hundred miles knows she's evil. Don't know why someone ain't done something about that woman. Don't look at me. I don't go around cursing people. That's risky root work. It costs beaucoup. Oh, Betsy. Poor, poor Betsy. See that mirror near the windows? Something that happened right here in this room is trapped in there. The spirits are blocking that glass. But listen now. You cast daylight on the mirror and they'll flee for sure. Daylight, remember.
Is you Miss Baudine? It says so on the house, don't it? What you want? Speak up now. My mistress, Mrs. Lallery, she say to come right away. Delphine Lallery? Yes, ma'am. You better hurry right now. And what if I'm busy? Oh, no, please. If I don't fetch you, like she said, I'll be in terrible trouble. Hush, child. I suppose she has business she wants done. Well, money is money. I'll get my wrap. Thank you, Miss Bodine. Where to, friend? This is the Lalahri house, or the back of it. I wasn't good enough to be seen in the parlor. No, Mrs. Lalahri met me out in the gazebo like a secret. <laughs> that woman sure had evil on her mind. When a rich woman like Delphine Lalahri sends for a voodoo woman, it's for one of two reasons. Desperate love or blinding head. And Delphine loved no one. Oh, this fearsome place. So much wickedness went on here. You, listen now. There are eight ghosts trapped here, sorrow bound. Use my revealed spirit spell to find them. They'll help you get into the gazebo quickly. Oh. 
Thank you. 
Where to, friend? Where to, friend? Where to, friend? Would you like to go? Oh. <laughs> 
Where to, friend? Where would you like to go? I do thank you for coming, Miss Jessie. Now, any old thing I say is just between us, right? I'll take your secrets to the grave. Good. Now, it's about this certain lady, a Mrs. Anton. She's come here from New York and made quite a spectacle of herself, thinking she's fine in those Paris gowns. Oh, it's not fair. Why should she be invited to all the best parties? What do you want me to do? Well, I want you to curse her. She can die for all I care. If the lady were too sick to go to parties, that would do, yes? I suppose, but it must be for the rest of the season. Doing harm is risky work. The price is $150. That's insane. As you like. Wait, I... I can pay you 25 now, and the rest when it's done, if she hasn't appeared at any parties. So it shall be. Two friend. I see you over there. I reckon you're here about the time I met with Jesse Bowden. Terrible, wicked story. They don't tell you things like that in history books. Looks like these old swamp devils don't want you to visit. You appease them 
and then leave. Then you can come on up. Look in the basket in the swamp. Oh, and if you see my blue anole, fetch him for me, will you? Been gone for weeks now. Poor thing. Poor thing. Now then, where to next?
to go.
hundred fifty dollars. That sure is a lot of money. I almost hoped she'd turn me down. She's a snake of a woman. It's an evil job, all right. And don't you forget it. Making someone sick for three months. I was thinking about the snake belly curse. Jesse Bodine, don't even think about cursing that woman. Ain't no point calling on the law unless you can't get the job done no other way. They might take it to mind that you the one deserve punishment. You're right. Must be a medicine that do the trick just the same. You'll need someone inside the house to slip it to her. I know the maid. And I know the medicine. Fetch me a paper and I'll write down the name. Now then, where to next? That's Mrs. Anton's house over there. And this here's the pharmacy where I got the medicine. You look around, you'll see how those three months pass by. I didn't think too much about what I was doing. I was paid for a job and I did it. Judge for yourself if I fulfilled my side of the bargain. I'm sorry, I can't help you. The store is in complete disarray. I left simple instructions for how things should be arranged, but no one pays any attention. I could help you if my shelves were in order, but right now I can't find anything. I'm sorry.
medicine to Mrs. Anton no more. She's been good to me, and she suffers so. Now you listen, Bella. You mean nothing to Mrs. Anton, no more than a flea, and we had a deal. I doctored your mama for free. I just can't. All right. Guess I'll just have to give Suzanne Waits that love potion she asked me for. <gasps> Suzanne? She likes my William. She asked you for a potion? She did. I told her no, but maybe you and I aren't friends like I thought. No, please. I'll, I'll do as you say. That's better. Here's more medicine. Just one pinch in her tea come three o'clock. Swear it. I swear. Something in here that will help. How can I cure Mrs. Anton when I have no idea what's wrong?
Shelves, finally. Now I can do business. Yes, now I know just where to find things. Oh, oh, uh, be careful with that pink packet. That's aconite. Very, very deadly. Even in small doses, it can cause cramping and gastrointestinal distress. Yes, do be careful with that. Sold a lot recently. Not sure why.
Now then, where to next? Where would you like to go? Where to, friend? I... I feel better. It doesn't hurt anymore. I'm free. Did what I said. The season is over and Mrs. Anton did not attend a single party. What you say is true. Then you'll be paying me $125 like we agreed. But how do I know you had anything to do with Mrs. Anton's illness? Why, well, it might have been a case of indigestion. What kind of fool would I be if I paid such a princely sum to some old voodoo hag woman? The 25 I gave you already is payment enough. 
You gave me your word. Don't you use that tone of voice with me. Leave now or I will have the law on you. You cross me, Delphine Lalahri, and you will regret it. Now then, where to next? I was so angry. The things I did for that money. The way I made Mrs. Anton suffer. Then to be cheated, kicked aside like a dog. If anyone deserved a curse, it was Delphi Lazari. The law had to be on my side. I made up my mind to cast the worst curse I had ever heard of. I would call upon Dambala and invoke the curse of fire. You can find it here in this shop, as I did. Find the curse. Find the curse.
bliss. They end and O I. They bliss. I and they. They and I bliss in Now then, where to next? Thank <laughs> you.
Now then, where to next? Now then, where to next? Where to now? Childish, envy blighted spirits. They'll do anything to stop my tell. The story's almost done now, but you need that voodoo doll. It's the most powerful object in the curse. I can feel it. They tore that doll and spread it to the four winds. You'll have to collect the parts and put it back together. I'll make you a list.
Where to now? to next. Thank you. 
Where shall I take you? Would you like to go? Dambala, avenge me! I ran up to the attic to make sure the servants got out. What I saw up there. Horrors. The stories are true. Delphine Lalaurie is a murderess. Run, Delphine. The flames, they will find you. Jesse was right. The flames found Delphine Lalaurie. A week later, a passenger ship burned in New York Harbor killing all aboard. As for Jessie Bodine, she and her little house went up in flames ten years later. Mambo Marie warned that the Loa cast their own judgments. 
just as I'm sure you have made yours. Join us next time for another tale from our vaults. I'm Edward Blackgate. Good night. Thank you.